Hi folks, hope you're doing well. Blake here and I'm back with another video of music related content and hopefully this one will be really useful to any indie musicians out there. So as you'll know, if you follow me on social media or if you're subscribed to my YouTube, any of that sort of stuff, I've just released my second single. It's called Sunday Evening and I'm really happy with it. It's a very chilled out, neo soul infused track. It's about wanting the weekend to last forever and spending it with the person you love rather than facing the working week. So I'm very happy with it, but obviously as an independent musician, I've had to find lots of different ways to promote the single. And as well as the key points that I'll go over throughout this video, what I realized is there's not that many good guides which go into detail on different ways you can promote your music, their cost, their exposure, and the chance of success you'll have when you actually apply or try and promote it using those methods. So I thought I'd go through using my own experience of what I found out, and here are 10 different ways that you can promote your music based on the learnings from my new single, Sunday Evening. So obviously a quick disclaimer first, I'm an independent and small musician. This isn't going to be a clickbait video of how to get thousands and thousands of streams on Spotify or Apple Music or whatever. I don't know exactly how to do that, but hopefully it will save you time anyway, because I'm gonna give you all the information you need for lots of different promotional services. I'll tell you what they cost, I'll tell you what the exposure is likely to be for them if you are chosen and you do successfully use them. And the final thing to mention is that obviously depending on the genre of music you make, the budget you have and also your current fan base, that will affect your reach naturally when you try and promote your single. This is not going to be an exhaustive list of everything you can do and I'm still learning so if you know other methods I've missed out and have an experience please let me and fellow musicians know in the comments below how you promote your music and what you found to work. Okay, let's get into it. So the first one is quite obvious but it's also very valuable and that is you have to be a salesperson as well as being a musician. You've really got to own your music. So to people you know outside of the kind of music sphere, so that's friends, colleagues, family, neighbors, that sort of thing, you really want to promote your music to them and as they know you personally, they're more likely to interact with it. So definitely get people on board that you're close with and say to them, you know, I've got a new single coming out, it comes out on this date, please can you follow me? Give them a link to do it on Spotify, I'll talk about a smart link in a moment. All that sort of stuff, put the word out there. Also when you're playing gigs, if you're active and doing local gigs, make sure when you're performing, you play your upcoming single, you talk about it to the audience, you say it's coming out, you ask them to follow you on social media platforms, you ask them to follow you on streaming sites, all that sort of stuff. Organic reach is so important because when you start paying for promotion, yes, you'll reach loads more people, but those people will not know you. So you've got to make much more of an impression on them for them to then go and listen to your music or buy your music. Whereas when it's people you know, family, friends, colleagues, all that sort of stuff, they already know you from a personal basis. So you've already got that relationship and you can say, I'd really appreciate your help. Please listen to the single, the album, whatever. So definitely don't forget about this step. It's free, so obviously the cost of this is absolutely zero. The success is very high, so let's say 10 out of 10, because it's your family and friends and so on. They're gonna to want to see what you've made just because it's you making it, so make sure to ask them to go and check it out. And exposure kind of depends on how popular you are, how big's your social circle. So out of 10, I've given it a score of two to four, two being you're quite a small musician, you've just got a few family members and friends, four being you've got quite a big social circle, it'll stretch out quite a lot, you might get a few hundred listens, that sort of thing. But definitely, one thing you have to do, and it's free and always worth doing, is own your music and promote it in an organic way to the people you know and care about. Okay, so that's all well and good, but most of us won't know hundreds or thousands of people, so then we've got to start promoting. And one obvious and good way of doing it is social media. So social media is a bit annoying. It's got algorithms which mean that even if you've got followers that follow you, they might not see when you put something out. For instance, I've got about 1400 fans on Facebook, or followers or whatever kind of the word is for it. And that's great, but every time I share something on Facebook, I'd be surprised if a few hundred of them see it. It's more likely to be about 50 of them seeing it. Depends on how many of those followers actually regularly interact with my posts. 
to such an extent where my posts will then be suggested for them. That's quite annoying, to be honest. I think it's pretty annoying as a kind of independent musician and must be annoying for any small business owners as well. And what it means is you have to use things like Facebook and Instagram advertising to reach people who already actually follow your page. So when you use things like Facebook or Instagram or Google Ads or even TikTok, they're actually quite good in that you can specify your demographic. So if you know the kind of people that will be into your music, say people have told you your music sounds like another famous artist, or you know that a certain age group is good for your music, then you can set that in your demographics. You can also set up things like area. The other thing to know about kind of advertising on social media platforms is over time, the kind of demographic that the advert will be aimed towards will change. So Facebook and Instagram and Google Ads and some of the others as well, will kind of run these um, algorithms and what they'll find out is who is interacting most with the advert, so what age they are, what interests they have based on their Facebook profile, all that sort of stuff. So actually running adverts over a longer period but probably spending less per day might have a benefit in that the algorithm has a longer time to work out who your target audience is. So bear that in mind as well. One other thing to mention regarding TikTok is TikTok has its own kind of distribution platform and it's called Sound On. If your distributor has not put something on TikTok, I'd advise going through Sound On because they give you all the royalties from your music and it will get put on TikTok and another kind of related platform that they have. Might be a good way to get TikTok opportunities for your music. To be honest, I don't know the full ins and outs of that, but definitely go and check it out. And you've got nothing really to lose by signing up with Sound On. If you wanted to do it, it's free, and you just submit your songs for consideration on the platform. In terms of sharing your music though, what is the best way of doing it to people on social media and to people that you know, like your family and friends? Well, it's definitely with a smart link. So I use Feature FM, but there's a few different websites you can use. If you go on here and set up what's called a smart link, that'll be a website and you can kind of choose what the website domain is. And it will be a link which gives you access to your song on all different streaming sites. And if people click on this advert, it brings up a loading page and then you can say choose your preferred music service and they can click on Spotify or Apple Music or Amazon or Deezer or whatever. And the benefit of that is obviously if people don't use, for instance, Spotify, you've not lost them in the advert when you say, please come and listen to my song on Spotify or however you advertise it. And the final point I'm gonna make on this is consider making a promo video or a couple of promo videos as well as pictures can do in adverts. They're not that visually striking and people obviously consume media differently. Generally speaking, videos are more interactive. If you put a 30 second kind of clip of a sort of homemade music video on or you performing the song, just a 30 second video, kind of like what you'll see on TikTok and make that as part of the ad, people might be interested to find out more about who you are, what the song is, more about the music and so on. So consider that when you're making your campaign for your advert on social media. So in terms of the cost of the social media campaigns, in terms of the exposure, and in terms of the success, the cost is kind of up to you. It's entirely up to you from basically a pound to, I don't know, thousands of pounds if you have the budget, you know, it's kind of up to you what you want to spend. In terms of exposure, again, it's kind of up to you. You can set your demographics very wide or very narrow and you can kind of reach thousands of people or not that many people depending on your budget and your demographics. And in terms of success, I'd say it's pretty high. So I've given it like a seven out of 10 and what I mean by that is you'll get a lot of clicks, you'll get a lot of people listening to your song because you've advertised it. If you've advertised it sufficiently well, you pick up people who will likely be fans of it. You'll very likely get people interacting at least with the Facebook post. And if you make it easy for them to get from that to your kind of streaming sites, you're gonna very likely get listens or pre-saves. So another way you can promote your music, which is quite well known, but unfortunately you're not likely to be successful, although it's probably worth a go anyway, is actually pitching your release to Spotify, pitching it to Amazon, all those kind of services who offer pitching as you're about to release your song. For this, for each streaming platform, you have to download an artist app, so Spotify for artists, Amazon Music for artists, and so on. 
and you go in there and using the creator tools it's on the desktop version of the software using the creator tools you can then set it up so that people at those streaming services will listen to your song before it's released one thing to consider is that you have to upload it at least a week in advance of the actual release date and advisably more than a week in advance because the more in advance you do it obviously the more chance they have to listen to it before they then compile their kind of new release day playlists and those playlists are made up every Friday so it's a good idea to have a release on a Friday and at least a week before set it up so that on the system your song is going to be considered for addition to those playlists that the big streaming sites make every week. So why do I say it's not likely to be successful? Well Spotify alone gets thousands and thousands of songs submitted every week so the chance of you being one of those that is put in one of those big playlists is not really very likely. The other thing is naturally although they try and make different playlists for different moods and different kind of genres some genres are obviously much better suited to Spotify playlists than others. If your song is quite poppy, if it has electronic elements, if it's very like radio ready and commercial and it's that kind of genre, it's probably going to do quite well and have a decent chance because a lot of the stuff they make, like the Fresh Friday sort of finds and things, are that kind of thing that you could hear on the radio. So if it is that sort of stuff, you might have a good chance. If it's more niche in terms of genre, then it's not that likely unless they've got a specific playlist that they're looking for, for instance, for soulful music, or they're looking for jazz music, or they're looking for whatever, that kind of thing. So just bear that in mind. I wouldn't say it's not worth doing because it's free, and if you do get put on one of those playlists, then you're gonna get loads and loads of listeners. So the cost is free for the streaming sites. You can download the artist software or app for free, and you can set it up. The likely success here, I've said, is one out of 10, just because there's so many submissions. And then in terms of exposure, probably eight out of 10. If you put on one of the big, big playlists, you're gonna get a lot of listens. So worth doing, but don't make it your main form of promotion, I'd say. So in a similar vein is BBC Radio Introducing. So obviously BBC Radio Introducing is a kind of champion of promoting local unsigned artists, independent artists, and kind of promoting them within the local scene, giving them events and opportunities and that sort of thing. It's really helpful if you can get promoted on it. What I'd say is that you're more likely to be chosen in comparison to the playlisting that I've just been over. But again, the BBC get loads and loads of submissions and there's a few things to consider here. So again, you have to think about the genre of music you are, how likely it is to fit on any of your kind of standard radio programming that you hear. Although they do apparently send it between BBC radio shows. So if there is one on another channel, they might send it there. The other thing to consider is the size of area that you're from. So at the moment, I'm living in the three counties area which is absolutely massive. Obviously Hertfordshire, Bedfordshire and Buckinghamshire. The benefit of that is if you get played on a station with lots of listeners, you obviously get a lot of people exposed to your music. The problem with it is though, the bigger the area is, the more musicians there's gonna be submitting songs and arguably the less chance you're gonna have of getting picked and played on their station. So definitely think about this when you choose your local BBC station. So what I'd say about it is, again, it's free. It's worth doing for that, it's free. In terms of success, it's more likely than the playlisting, but they do have a lot of submissions, depending on where you're from. I'm gonna say three out of 10. It's definitely not impossible, but there's quite a few people submitting, depending on your genre, depending on your area, all that sort of thing. You have to bear that in mind. And then in terms of exposure, I'd say seven out of 10. So BBC Radio is obviously well known. Even the local BBC Radio will pick up quite a few listeners. So if you played on it, it'll be hopefully picked up by a lot of people and you get probably a few hundred streams or something like that. So definitely worth doing, but again, not your prime method of promotion, I'd say, but nevertheless worth submitting to BBC Radio Introducing. So next up, we've got submission websites. Now there are loads and loads of these, but there's two in particular I'm gonna talk about, and they are SubmitHub and MusoSoup. So first we're gonna talk about SubmitHub, and on SubmitHub you pay in these credits, which are kind of the currency of the website. So one credit is about a dollar, 
but if you buy them in bulk then you save a bit of money so 30 credits are $27 and 100 credits are $80 so I guess that's about £65 or something I don't know exactly and once you kind of put your song on the website or your album you can then choose who to submit it to and there are three different categories of people you can submit to so the first one is playlisters these are people who make playlists either on Spotify or on SoundCloud this is quite good actually so you go on you can choose who to send it to and they'll either cost you one two or three credits which I guess is the cost they've set themselves but will also depend on the reach they have and that sort of thing and the thing I like about Submit Hub is it will tell you who these people are, how often they accept tracks that are sent to them, the sort of genre of music they like, what their exposure is, how many followers they have on their kind of playlist, all that sort of thing. In terms of who I like to send to, I generally pick people who are in the middle, so I like them to be quite responsive and I like them to accept some submissions, so maybe 30-40% of songs that are sent to them but not 100%. If it's really high, then I know they're not really listening to the song. There's no kind of curation with the playlist. They're just taking whoever sends the music and putting it out there. Um, and you're paying for each of these submissions, don't forget. So I'd rather pay to send it to someone who I really want to be involved in it. I think I had 20 accepts and I sent it to about 100 people or so. So not too bad, like 20 or so different people put it on playlists. Worth doing, I think just beware that obviously it does add up if you keep buying credits, your budget could take a hit. So I mentioned there were three categories, the other two I don't find personally as useful. So one is people that are in licensing deals and record companies. Now it's not that that's not useful, it's just first of all a lot of these people want the music to be unreleased so that they can have the rights for it for whatever they are doing, so their record company or their sync deal or a lot of them if they're record companies might want something more back from you so they might want you to commit to them for so many releases they might want you know a certain percentage of income from streams or whatever whatever it is and that means it's a bit more of a complicated process than just sending your work to playlisters Muso Soup works a little bit differently so you pay a flat fee to submit your song and then you get a lot of people pitching back ideas to you and a cost associated with that so the flat fee to send your work out to loads of people and it gets sent out over the course of I think it's like 30 days is something like £30, can't remember exactly and then you'll get a load of offers coming back for people who want to use your track for one thing or another you've got to be careful with this because again if you keep saying yes to all of them the cost will add up massively a lot of them offer a free alternative which is adding you to a Spotify playlist but as good as that sounds some of these Spotify playlists might not be legit or you might not be on there very long or they are only people on there that they've featured before and the only people that follow those are the artists that are on it so not necessarily worth doing you can also just decline offers but you get varied offers from them and some I've found to be useful so some people add you to playlists and they do get listens Again, it's varied in terms of success. You also get things like blogs being written about the song. Usually the people who offer you a blog feature or a playlist or whatever will ask for a bit of money um, through the system. Now it's a secure system and everything, but basically it's up to you as to whether you want to pay for these things or not. Sometimes you can read them and think this is not legitimate and other times it feels like real people are emailing you. I'd say that the cost is generally kind of expensive as it adds up. I think for Submit Hub, you know, it's free to do an initial set up your account and put your song on there, but then it's roughly a dollar for every credit, and a lot of submissions are going to be three credits. So to send to one playlister is going to be, you know, three dollars or two pound twenty or something. I don't know what the conversion is. So quite expensive considering they won't all say yes. It saves you a bit of money if you buy 100 credits for like £65 or $80, whatever it is. But nevertheless, a lot of those people won't say yes and you've got to be careful about who you select to send your work to. And I'd say the same thing about Muso Soup as well. You get a lot of offers that aren't legitimate. In terms of exposure, I'd say 2 out of 10. A lot of them won't have many followers. You might get some listeners, but you're not going to get hundreds of listeners overnight using this. Lots of artists use it and lots of the playlisters on there don't have many followers but they just like music and they like making playlists. 
So this next method is also a submissions website, but I'm gonna make it its own kind of point because it's a little bit different. It's Syncr, so that's S-Y-N-C-R.com. It is a website where you submit your music and you do it specifically for music sync deals. So for your music to be used, maybe in like commercial places like gyms or cafes or restaurants in different places, or also for things like the background for TV shows or films or that sort of thing. It feels a little bit more professional in that briefs are written and the briefs are put on there by professional companies or record companies or that sort of thing, which obviously means they're quite high in terms of the requirements to get on one of them and be accepted. It's more difficult probably than the other submissions websites, but they are probably worth doing, I'd say. Um, now, although it's free to make an account on Syncr, you are limited in terms of how many opportunities you can apply for and which opportunities you can apply for as well. Some require you to have a pro membership basically on the website, which is about five pounds a month. So it's not very expensive, but nevertheless, again, it's not too likely you'll be successful. You might be, of course, but you are paying per month with no guarantee of that, of course. In terms of the ratings, I'd say it's five pounds a month for the pro deal, so pretty good. Exposure, probably seven out of 10. You know, they're quite good opportunities generally, like being in big films, TV shows, that sort of thing. Probably get quite a lot of listeners and new fans. Success, I'm not sure. I haven't been successful yet with it and I've applied to a few. I've got the feeling because of the professional kind of look of the website and the extent of the briefs, and the fact that so many of them are put up by kind of quite big companies and big opportunities, I'm gonna say that success is probably unlikely. I've written two out of 10 on my notes here. I'm gonna say between two and four. I think depending on what opportunity you apply for, obviously depends how successful you are likely to be. Okay, so the last kind of sort of submission thing I've done is through MySphere. That's M-Y-S-P-H-E-R-A. I'm not sure entirely how to pronounce that. And this is a kind of black box approach to submissions. Basically, you go on the website, you pay a one-off fee for your submission, um, and you submit your music. You put in all the details about your music, you know, kind of who has the rights for it, what it's about, what genre it is all that sort of stuff, a little story about how you wrote the song. And then you submit it, and once you've submitted it, you pay for it. I think it's about 25 pounds, something like that. You pay for it, and then over the next four or so weeks after that, you get weekly email updates of saying, your song's been sent out to these playlisters and these playlisters and so on. Occasionally, this will be associated with a spike in your listens on Spotify or whatever. So I do know that it is being promoted. The problem with this is because it's a bit more of a black box kind of approach, you're not as in control. You know, you send it off, it gets sent out there. Whatever success you get in those four weeks, you get, and it's kind of not your control. But having said that, I've had a lot of listeners through this, not loads, but you know, I've had a, a, been added to a few good playlists through this and also it's 25 pounds which doesn't feel that expensive for like a one-off payment kind of black box promotional thing it seems pretty legit it's not that expensive and you'll get some listeners so that's worth doing i think in terms of how i'd rate it 25 pounds it's not too bad um exposure five out of ten you'll get some listeners you won't get loads and loads but you get some it's not too bad success seven out of ten they do look through your submissions and see if your single is kind of suitable for them to promote. But I think a lot of the cases they say yes. I think they'd only say no if it was really not suitable, it wasn't like, you know, mixed properly, it didn't sound properly, it wasn't, it was a very, very niche thing or whatever. I think most of the time they're gonna say yes and they're gonna send it to people. How likely those people are to then put it into playlists and so on, who can say? Only the company, I guess. It's kind of a black box approach, like I say. So that's my Safira. So one thing I definitely recommend you doing is sending your music out to very local radio stations. So local radio stations are so often looking for submissions. Very often on their website or their Facebook page or whatever, they'll have a point where they say, contact us, and sometimes they say, submit your music, and there'll be an online form where you can do it. Sometimes they'll say, submit your music, and they'll give you an email address. I would strongly recommend taking that email address or using that form 
messaging the local kind of radio station, saying who you are, what your release is, when it's coming out, a little story about it maybe, that sort of thing. I've found it to work, I've been on a few local radio stations with my recent release. Generally those kind of broadcasters quite like hearing from local people and it's great to promote local artists as well. You probably won't get massive exposure because obviously local radio stations don't have huge followings most of the time, but you'll get some people following and some people listening and you might find due to the kind of community spirit that because those people are also local to you, then they're likely to come and give you a follow, listen to your music, that sort of thing. Definitely worth doing and you're likely to have some success. It's free. I mean, I don't think they'd ever charge you. It'd be strange if they did, so it's free. Um, in terms of exposure, three out of 10 probably. Like, you're not gonna get loads and loads of listeners, but you might get some, especially if it's a big area. And in terms of success, I've said nine out of 10. If you're a local musician and you're friendly and kind and you message them and you're nice about it, they're probably gonna wanna support you. They're probably gonna feature your song. So definitely do that and get in touch with local radio stations. However, I would say prioritise local radio stations. If you put into the internet radio stations which accept independent music or that sort of thing, there will be loads of websites which give you suggestions to loads and loads of different radio stations where you can send your music for consideration. So all of these will likely consider independent music. However, as I've just mentioned, they're gonna give preference to local artists most of the time. Much like with the BBC introducing point, the bigger the radio station, the less likely you are to be accepted. So going to your local radio station for me is a far better kind of opportunity. This is essentially cold calling and even if you're nice about it, they're gonna have loads and loads of emails. So what's the chance you're gonna get picked from the probably thousands of people applying? I know of course, if you don't have a go, you won't get picked, but I'd say don't prioritize this. It's free. Exposure, I mean, depends, doesn't it? How big the station is, where it is, all that sort of stuff. So I've said two to eight out of 10, depends. Two being like quite a small town kind of station that's, you know, let's say in your country. Eight being, let's say like a massive station that covers, you know, nationwide or that sort of thing. Success, honestly, zero out of 10. If you're going for like really, really big stations and you're a complete unknown, you're an independent musician, you're sending it there just because you've got a new song, you're emailing in a kind of cold calling kind of method, it's probably not going to work. I wouldn't prioritise this at all, so I'm going to say 0 out of 10. Okay, and the final one I've used and some other artists have used, although I don't know if I used it for this actual release, is the online only radio stations. So these are things like Amazing Radio, Radio Wigwam, there's loads and loads of different ones. They're all over Twitter and everything like that. What they are essentially is often, but not always, you pay a bit of money and your song can get submitted to the radio station. There'll be supposedly a certain amount of people listening online. Who knows how true that is? I don't know how many people listen to it. And you'll get kind of notified on social media. They'll let you know if your song's been played on the radio station. I'd say don't pay too much for this. You don't know who's listening and how kind of extensive the reach of those radio stations are. I'm not saying don't do it. It's sometimes worth doing. It's a nice little thing to share on social media, but you don't really get too much interaction from it, in my experience. You get limited exposure. I don't know how many people actually actively listen to these things. I mean, I've submitted to them, but I can't say honestly I've listened to these online only kind of radio stations. And I wonder how many people that is the case for. I imagine quite a lot of them, to be honest. So I'd say the cost is very variable, depending on which station it is. Exposure, two out of 10, there might be some people listening, you're not gonna get floods of people listening to your music. And then I'd say success, basically 10 out of 10. If you submit it to there, I don't think they ever really reject songs, so you're probably likely to get played there. Whether that's gonna massively benefit you as an independent musician, it's hard to say really. Okay, so they are 10 methods that I've used to promote my music. I've spoken about the cost of each one, the likely exposure you'll get from them and the success you will or won't have from applying to and using that promotional service. 
if you have any others then please do let me know down below and let other musicians know down below as well because I'm sure it'd be very useful so in the description below I've put in all the links you need to all the methods I spoke about and things you can apply for to promote your music thanks very much for watching if you enjoy music related content then I do videos like this pretty much every week as well as vlogs like this I also do original songs I do covers I do reaction videos I do guitar lessons I do so many different kinds of music related video and I release them every single week so if you enjoy this video then please like it and share it but if you enjoy music content in general please consider clicking the little subscribe and notification bell buttons then you'll be notified every time I do a new video thanks very much take care of yourself and I'll see you next time. There's no nine to five. We got all we need right here. Da 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 dum.